If we've seen it once, we've seen it a thousand times. Google Ads will release a feature in their platform, then the other channels will shortly thereafter, or sometimes a while after, launch their own version of the same feature. So today we're gonna to talk about LinkedIn's version of the recommendations tab right in the interface. They're gonna do the same thing that Google does, give you suggestions that try to improve your performance based on their own internal learnings. And this is still a pretty new feature. So we're gonna talk about some things in some help articles, as well as look at some examples in the interface. But my guess is that this is gonna get more and more robust as the months continue. Let's hop in. I want to start off in the LinkedIn help article about the recommendations tab within Campaign Manager. We're going to go through just the basics here and some of the frequently asked questions before we get into the interface, just so I'm not bouncing back and forth too much. The first thing to know is that all of your recommendations in Campaign Manager are going to be at the campaign level, and the goal of them is to help you improve the return on investment for your campaigns. As you can see in that first tiny paragraph, LinkedIn's AI model is going to personalize recommendations to the specific campaign based on the historical data that will ideally help you perform even better than you have before. Now, the way that they phrase these recommendations is that they want you to fix common errors in your campaign setup so you can improve performance. Just like with Google Ads, whenever you see one of the recommendations, you will see performance data that should help convince you if you will, as to why you should adopt the recommendation LinkedIn has for you. And effectively, that data and whatever those numbers end up being are what LinkedIn expects the results will be from that change based on their AI model. And that's why they're suggesting that you use it. So effectively, you're getting a little bit of a peek behind the curtain as to how LinkedIn's AI model sees the potential future for your campaigns. And in just a minute, we'll hop into an account or two and I'll show you what some of these will look like. But for now, let's go through some of these FAQs because I think they are useful. So what information is gonna be available in these? It's all going to be campaign level suggested changes to your campaign's configuration that will include the estimated results if you don't apply the recommendation, and it will also show you the estimated potential impact if you do apply LinkedIn's recommendation. Now the next couple, I think kind of go together. So let's open these up a little bit. Why should I trust these recommendations? Everything is going to be specific to your campaign based on its historical data. My client accounts will not affect your client accounts, and one campaign in your client account will not have influence over the recommendations for another campaign. They're all going to be separate. They've carefully selected the triggers for each of the recommendations to try and make sure it has a specific impact for each advertiser's ROI for that campaign. And when it comes to the actual results, nothing is guaranteed. LinkedIn makes that clear. It's all an estimate based on best efforts with their AI model. So just because they have estimated impact of these changes does not mean that making that change will have that impact. It's just their best guess. Moving down the line, you will be able to see more than one recommendation if there are multiple things that LinkedIn thinks will help improve performance in multiple different areas of that campaign. And as we'll see in a client account here in just a minute, you can have multiple recommendations for different areas at a time. But additionally, one question is, is it possible to have recommendations that might conflict with each other? Now you'll notice here, they say they work very closely with each product team that owns a recommendation to ensure consistency, non-duplication, and adherence to a comprehensive set of product principles. In no area does that say, no, we won't have any conflicting recommendations. Be on the lookout for potentially conflicting recommendations, depending on what your performance looks like and what the AI model might forecast as potential impacts for each adjustment. But enough of the hypothetical, even though this change is still relatively new, I do have some client accounts that have some different recommendations in them. So we're gonna have to blur some things out but let's hop into an account and start looking at what this is gonna look like. The first thing I wanna show you is where recommendations live and how you'll know if you have a new one. This is going to be extremely simple. It is very similar to the Google Ads interface. Over here in the left-hand navigation, you'll see recommendations is just above this line that separates the top section from the assets and account settings. And if you have any new recommendations that have not been viewed before, there'll be a red dot next to it. Now, if you have recommendations that have already been viewed, the recommendations tab will still live there. You just won't see a red dot. And we'll see that in a different account here in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and click to the recommendations tab. Here you can see that we only have one suggested adjustment. 
and that's going to be to enable the LinkedIn audience network. And here's why LinkedIn thinks it'd be helpful. It'd help to drive an estimated 13 more clicks or 430% more the daily value without changing the budget. If you want some more details, you can click on this and it'll give you insights as to where this suggestion came from. Right now, I don't find this to be super useful, so we'll close out of this. But just like Google Ads, I'm currently at the account level and you'll remember that all LinkedIn recommendations are at the campaign level. So right now, this says view one recommendation. That means that LinkedIn suggests that for one campaign, we enable the LinkedIn audience network. So if I click view recommendation, you can now see that it's broken out the specific campaign. We have a lot more stats of what the potential impact could be. And if I wanted to, I could easily just click apply or dismiss, depending on what I wanna do. For now, I'm gonna leave it because the LinkedIn audience network is just one type of recommendation that LinkedIn will have. Let's hop into one, maybe two other accounts and see if we can come up with some different examples. So like I mentioned earlier, I've already viewed these recommendations before this video. So the recommendations tab still lives over in this left-hand navigation. There's just no red dot here, but let's click on this one. Now we can see the only suggestion here is to launch a lead generation objective campaign. And although all of the suggestions that LinkedIn makes, they say are based on campaign performance. This one's interesting. It says you have fewer lead generation campaigns than advertisers that are similar to you. So in some ways you're getting a little bit of competitive insight from this recommendations tab that you might not get in other platforms. If we click more details here, same sort of thing as before, they use machine learning to find effective strategies that worked for similar campaigns and advertisers. And they recommend them for you when they think they'll improve your results. So if we click view recommendation, this is where we start to see a deviation from some of the LinkedIn articles that we talked about earlier. This is suggesting that at an account level, we create a lead generation campaign. This does not pick a current campaign that is website conversion or traffic or video views. It basically just says launch one. So in some ways this is useful because you've got that competitive insight, but in other ways might not be as useful because it's not giving you a specific suggestion. Additionally, you can easily just mark this as applied when you're done. It's not prompting you to auto create a campaign right from here. It just wants you to say, I've done this once you've done it or dismiss it if you don't want to. Now for the last account we're gonna look at simply because I can't find any other suggestions right now, we can see that we have a handful of different adjustments here. I'm still at the account level. So when it suggests that we enable the LinkedIn audience network, you'll see here that we have six recommendations. If I click on that, we now have a line item for each of the different campaigns that it suggests we apply it to, since these are all campaign level suggestions. For now, I'm gonna leave those. Let's head back in and look at some of the other types. The second is gonna be to add audiences prioritized by your sales team. Now specifically, they want you to reach and engage the audiences that your sales team is trying to interact with. And if I click on more details here, it shows that it's already built an audience for you made up of the buyers who are pursued by your sales team based on the LinkedIn sales navigator account that you have set up. Now, whether or not your marketing team interacts with the sales team in respect to the audiences on sales navigator, that's probably different business to business, but this could be a really cool way to support your outbound sales activity with advertising and try and get a little bit more of a holistic approach there. Just like the other campaign, this one recommends that we apply it to four campaigns. In my opinion, some of these make sense, some of these don't, but that would be left up to you depending on what your goals were for each of these campaigns. And again, you get to see the estimated impact on weekly impressions, clicks, cost per click, and budget. There are some other lines where you have the cost per thousand accounts reached will be adjusted. And as you can see here, not all stats go in the positive direction. You might reach more member accounts but they estimate that you'll get less clicks and impressions in that first campaign. Okay, last recommendation is to add job titles based on the current job titles that you're already using. So again, we get more details. They've used machine learning to identify the most similar job titles to those that have already been selected in the campaign and narrowed it down to the ones that they think will have the biggest impact while maintaining the rest of the current campaign settings. So this one applies to a lot of campaigns. They suggest that we make this adjustment to 11 different campaigns. That's because in this account specifically, we're really focused on job titles because we're trying to reach a very narrow audience. So let's go ahead and see what these look like. Now for each of these, I know we have the campaign names blurred out, but you can see the job title up at the top. 
So this first one suggests to add head of business development to your target audience for this campaign. Then it shows you the affected impacted stats. But then down below, we have head of business development for a second campaign. And then on the third line, we have a director of customer marketing on that one to yet a different campaign. Now, as I mentioned, even though we have the campaign names blurred out for some of these, if we go down the whole page, which I'm not gonna do so that we don't have to blur it out, but each of these boxes looks identical. And the thing to call out is that each one of these will be one job title for one campaign. There's no example currently that shows a single campaign with multiple different job titles to add or one job title to be added to multiple different campaigns. As you can see here, the first two have the exact same job title, but it's suggesting in different boxes to apply them to different campaigns. So as you're going through these, make sure that you're reading very carefully which job title, which campaign, and then decide whether to apply it or dismiss it accordingly. Overall, I'm always a fan of getting suggestions on things that could be done to improve performance for my campaigns, whether it's on LinkedIn or Google or even Facebook's new recommendations. The biggest thing is just to make sure that you come in and regularly review them and either apply, dismiss, figure out what works best for you. So far, there's no optimization score that leans into these recommendations on LinkedIn the same way that there is on Google, but who knows, maybe down the line, they'll put together their own metric and then we'll end up having some sort of in account goal to reach for. But for right now, this is kind of a win-win. There's no downside into having the recommendations and you don't have to apply them if you don't want to. For each of these, if I wanted to get rid of this suggestion, I could just dismiss it. Or for the next one, I could come up and just click the X and now they've both been dismissed. Easy options for us to be able to get these out of here. Don't have to pay attention to them if you don't want to. And applying them is really quick. All you have to do is click apply and it's done. There was nothing else that happened. I didn't have to confirm. It was applied, it was done. So if you have any additional questions about how the recommendations work in LinkedIn, or if you see any recommendations that are outside of the fields that we've seen so far today, I'd love to hear about them. And if you have any additional questions about anything else in the LinkedIn platform, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.